first, I just want to say welcome everyone and just a huge thank you to CNA, CNAA for this opportunity. And thank you to all who are here listening, of course, our panel and the discussion that we're going to have. And really thankful for the gift of your time and for empowering girls and women all over the country. And so I'm going to throw it to Seth here real quick for an announcement on the sweet stakes drawing at the end of the event. Yes, thanks, Kathy. Um, as advertised, we are going to be giving away a set of 25 uniforms for a girls team at your school um, at the end of the workshop that you must be present to win. Um, so uh, we'll be taking care of everything from the uniforms, the decoration to the shipping. Um, all you need to do is if you um, visit the chat, I'll be putting the link in there. Um, all you need to do is go to that link, put in all your information. Um, and then again, at the end of the uh, show here, we're going to be choosing a winner and we'll get you all set up. Um, one side note, there is an age field that our legal department makes us put in there. So as long as everybody here is over the age of 13, um, I think we should be fine with that. Um, so again, everybody stay tuned um, and Kathy, take it away. All right. Well, uh, our story now, Women in Sports, is cast in our history and we're continuing to make history. And these three phenomenal women are further impacting, advancing, and making history. They are creating opportunity, and believe me, they are, for the rising generation. And it is my honor to introduce them. And so I'm gonna start, uh, I'm gonna introduce all three first. And first off is uh, Noelle Quinn. And if anybody is listening, I'm sure everybody knows her name and she's such a humble person. She's gonna get mad at me for saying that she is a legend, but she really is. Um, Noelle is currently the head girls basketball coach and AD at Bishop Montgomery High School and the associate head coach for the Seattle Storm, the reigning WNBA champs. So that's a huge deal, congratulations. And I can't believe you do both. Noelle is the AD and coaching at her alma mater where she attended and played. She became a WBCA All-American and she led the Lady Knights to four California state championships. It's just incredible. Noelle played college ball at UCLA where her name is all over the record books and went on to be drafted fourth overall in the WNBA draft. She played 12 years in the WNBA and she also played in the Turkish Basketball League. But, and this is a big one, and all three have, have that. Most important to her is, she said, she has been blessed. She is grounded in her faith. And her accomplishments are not only hers, but due to her faith, due to her mom, due to her family. And they've played just an incredible role. Noelle said she tries to live life with an attitude of purpose and giving, trying always to shine light on others. And that is powerful and her heart is fully vested in her student athletes. I'm gonna introduce Denise Udelhofen next. Denise is currently the Director of Athletics at Loris College, which is in Dubuque, Iowa. She has been there 25 years and has had quite the journey. She started as the men's and women's golf coach, and she also coached women's volleyball. She worked her way up to senior women's administrator and associate AD with many, many, many roles in between. She served in that role for five years as senior women's administrator and associate AD. In 2015, she was named director of athletics at Loris College, so yes. Under her direction, one of the biggest honors is the Learfield Sports Directors Cup, which since she's been named AD at Loris, they have improved every year and finished 16th in 2019. And I think this is a huge note on her. Um, Denise has hired all her staff and uh, that's due to her diligence on that and the relationship she has with them. I can't begin to tell you all the committee and work she has served on, but I wanna highlight a few that are impactful. And Denise, you're the senior member here besides me, I think. So your introduction's longer than everybody else's. 
Uh, so she is the chair and has served on the NCAA Committee on Women's Athletics this week. Um, I know this is near and dear to her. She has tireless, tirelessly worked with the SAC, which is the Student Athlete Advisory Committee on the national level and at Loris College. She also led the athletic department in 2020 to an award for diversity and inclusion presented by the NCAA and the Minorities Opportunity Athletic Association. But again, Denise says her success is her staffs and her student athletes. They work as a unit. And I say this, it's because she has such a servant's heart. And Loris is one of my accounts at East Bay and I get to see her in action. And um, I have to tell you when I walk in the room, if it's a staff meeting, they absolutely love working with her. They adore her. Her staff respects and they trust her and you can just see the relationships. So that's a little bit on Denise's background. Um, our third panelist is Allie Moreno. Allie is currently the head coach at St. Mary's High School in Stockton, California and is in her first year. She came back home to her alma mater from San Jose State where she served as associate head coach for six years and was recently named one of the top 50 most impactful assistant coaches. While at San Jose State, she was part of the largest single season turnaround win total. And I can, I, I know this because I used to coach. She spent hours and hours in the gym getting those student athletes to that point. She played college ball at Sacramento State where her name is all over the record books, especially as a shooter and a lockdown defender. In high school at St. Mary's, she led and was part of a state championship her junior year and a national championship her senior year. And she is now leading her alma mater. I listened to a podcast that was done in September with Allie. And I gotta tell you, after talking to her, my gut was right. She's got great energy. She is super talented. She's a worker. She's a fierce competitor and she is so accomplished. But what I took was this, Allie's about being a servant, giving. Number one is building relationships with her players, reaching different parts of them, getting by and beyond the surface. Not being a transactional coach, worrying just about those wins and losses, but being a transformational coach. So we have quite the panel and I'm excited to get to the first question. So we're gonna get going. Um, seniority, Denise, so I'm going to pick on you. I'm going to throw the first question your way. And that is, and, and everybody just chime in after that, but um, being an athletic director, a coach, or both at a Catholic high school or college, how is that experience different than a public college or high school? And do you think there are some advantages? And what are those advantages? Um, wow, right off the bat. <laughs> uh, I think, you know, I like, I've been in a Catholic college for 25 years, so I, it, it's comfortable for me. I would say that for us, since it's a private college, we can probably have those difficult conversations um, easier than, than most. And, you know, in this past year, I mean, difficult conversations have been what we've, you know, what we've endured. So I feel that, um, for me, I mean, in Catholic, you know, the, the Catholic tradition, you know, we really stress the dignity of the individual. And so deep down, it's how you treat other people. And so I think that's something that we that we work on here. We have a, a saying at Loris is Duhawks supporting Duhawks, and that's across the board. And so that's what we really, that's our, our motto that we go to quite a bit when we want to support one another. Um, I'm also, my biggest thing is I just, I'm a positive person. So I want to talk about the positives. Um, and turn every negative into a positive. So I think at a Catholic institution that you can do that and you can have a support from everyone um, at a Catholic institution. Yeah, um, for me piggybacking off that a little bit, the first thing I noticed was the strong community. As a player, when I was here, I noticed it, but you don't think of it at the age of 15, 16, 17 years old. But coming back, I got to see just how strong that community is at St. Mary's. Um, I obviously haven't spent a lot of time back here at the Catholic school, but 
um, St. Mary's motto is developing the whole student, spiritually, mentally, physically, academically, and athletically. And I love that part about being here at a Catholic school and embracing that whole motto with St. Mary's. Yeah, I would that's agree. great. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, I would agree. Um, you know, I, my mom, she worked her tail off. So I was able to be in private school for majority of my life. Um, you know, the only public school <laughs> that I can compare to is UCLA. And we all know that's a huge comparison. Um, but what I love about Bishop Montgomery and working in the Catholic school or private sector is that I have the um, ability to impact my student or my, my athletes or even students on a daily basis to the point where I know their name, to the point where I know their families, um, understanding why my players are the way they are. Because sometimes I, I know their parents, I get to know their parents and things of that nature. Um, but for me um, to, to be able to share my faith, um, to talk about God, we begin practice uh, in prayer and we end practice in prayer. I think to be able to understand like my impact goes deeper than just the wins and the losses um, is to be a representative, um, to be a great example. Um, we talk about this holistic um, aspect of, um, you know, making, uh, creating great young women and, and great young men as they lead um, into their futures. Um, but for me, just to have that community, that camaraderie in such a, um, you know, in an intimate type of way um, to get to really learn and impact, um, that's, that's where I find, um, you know, that I'm living in my purpose um, within this uh, private sector. Yeah, that, that's great. Does anybody want to add anything to that? No? Okay, cool. Uh, well, the next question I have, and um, everybody here on the panel reached such a high level of success, but I can't believe that there hasn't been some adversity on the way to, to getting to where you're at. And so my question is this. Um, how has adversity, because everyone has those moments, made you a better coach or a player or an administrator? And I guess I, I, the two part to this um, is, has faith played a role in that? And so, Allie, let's start with you on that one. Yeah, absolutely. I think persistence is obviously the number one thing it's taught me. Um, but more recently in the past year, and I think with COVID and switching over from college to high school is just faith in God's timing really ultimately was big for me. And I stopped in March doing college um, and then COVID hits and I'm like, oh my gosh, I was not expecting that. Everybody's on a hiring freeze. Um, so faith in his timing. And then three months later, you know, my alumni job opens up and everything just kind of falls into place with exactly how he wants it to. Um, and so that for me has been the biggest thing. And um, it's not always easy to remember to have faith in his timing and keep going, but um, he sends you a message real quick to remember that. <laughs> yeah, that's great, Allie. Um, Noel, how about you? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think adversity has made me a better person all around. I think, you know, I'll just be kind of honest. Yesterday, I had a tough day. And sometimes when adversity hits, you're, you're like, am I enough? Am I being valued? You know, these negative <laughs> thoughts start to creep in and then boom, it's like you, you get grounded in who you are. Like, you know, I, I can do all things through, through Christ who strengthens me. I'm more than a conqueror. Um, you know, if God is for me, who's against me, I'm fearfully and wonderfully made. So it's like the adversity that you go through or that I go through allows me to just remind myself who I am and whose I am. And it's not that this, um, these adver adverse times are um, going to make or break me, but that um, these uncomfortable, uncomfortable times um, show that I can grow. And when I look back on them, I'm like, wow, like I went through that. Um, one of my favorite quotes is from MLK, um, you know, the ultimate measure, I'll put woman in this, right? So the ultimate measure of a woman is not where she stands in moments of comfort and convenience, um, but where she stands at times of challenge and controversy. And so if I stand firm in my, you know, when things happen, good or bad and different, I always want my character to show through. Um, in my ground, in, in my grounded, I'm grounded in my faith and I understand that um, I'm a child of God, and so I'm going to have good, bad times. I'm going to have, have adverse times, but 
in the end, I'm going to grow through what I go through. Um, and so just remembering those things, I think, have made me not only a better coach or um, administrator or player in that sense, but an all around better person. Yeah, thank you for sharing that. Um, I just I love the idea that your identity and what we do is not tied up into how we're loved. It's whose we are. And so that's great. And I really appreciate you sharing that, Noelle. Um, Denise, we'll, we'll throw it over to you for your comments on that. Yeah, I think one thing that I always try to keep in my mind is everything happens for a reason. And so when it's, when it's tough, it's like, okay, there's a reason that I'm going through this. Um, I mean, COVID has been hard, um, but I, I mean, kind of go back a little bit further for me. I mean, I interviewed for this position as an AD three times. And so I could have easily uh, went somewhere else, but that's probably what drives me. When somebody tells me that I can't do something because I'm a woman, you know, or you're not going to lose a job because you're a female, I'm not going to fire a female, or you're not going to get that, you're going to get that committee position because you're a female and I have to have a female in that committee position. I mean, that drives me to prove to people that I'm going to get the position because um, I deserve it. I'm the right person for that position. And I think I tell every time I speak in a class or speak to female, you know, student athletes, it's like, that needs to drive you. So when somebody says something to you, instead of turning around and quitting, is that's what needs to drive you, is to prove to them that I'm the right person for the job. And so I think sometimes we feel like we have to work harder, um, but I think that's, and I have a daughter, so I say that to her all the time. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason, just push through it, push through it. And so I think that's what, that's what motivates me is when somebody doubts what I can do, then I'm gonna prove to them that I can do it. And so every time I have something in adversity, it's like, okay, everything happens for a reason. How am I going to get through this? So that's the way I fight through, I guess, or go through adversity. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Sports are made up of highs and lows. And I try to remember that um, even now more so when I'm a head coach that there's 15 young girls looking to how I handle adversity. Um, and if I could show them that you might beat the number one seed one day, but turn around and lose to the eight seed the next day, you got to have faith that everything happens for a reason and everything's going to happen how it's supposed to. You can't stay down in the lows. You got to get yourself back up to those highs. And same thing, you can't stay up in that high. You have to come down to reality and be able to face the next day the same head on mentality. Can I add to that as well? Um, along the lines of what Ali is saying, to be a good example for our student athletes, you have to walk the walk and talk the talk. So if I'm telling my student athlete, Hey, when adversity hits, like you can do it, um, you know, you can, you can prosper, just fight through it, be mentally tough and all these things. If I might myself am not living in that, <laughs> then that, that's a problem, you know what I'm saying? So it's just being a great example to those who are looking up to us as well. Yeah, great. Um, just because I was part of the experience, uh, there's a quote from my brother I just wanted to share about adversity. And he said, the adversity, it will buy you a ticket to a place you couldn't have gone any other way. And I just, I, I wanted to throw that in real quick. So um, he went through the ultimate adverse, not ultimate, but a big adversity. And I just really respect what he had to say and how he handled that. So, um, all right, well, I, I have a, another question and I, I, I think I'll start, whoever wants to answer this first, just go ahead and jump in. Um, I feel like there's been so much that has gone on in our country with racial unrest, social injustice, Black Lives Matter. And I guess I wanna know how you've addressed that with your teams or how you've started the, the discussion, um, if, if there's been any action steps. And so um, I'll just open that up, whoever's comfortable in, in um, answering that next, that would be great. I mean, I could talk to you about as an administrator, I think one of the things that you have to remember is you can't do it by yourself. And so you have to lean on other people. Um, you know, at, at Loris, we have a Center for Inclusion and Advocacy and their director, um, Sergio has been, I mean, he's been the person that I can go to because you're not gonna have all the answers, but, but we try to put things in place. It's something that we've done in like the last two years and we really lean on our student athletes. What do you want? What do you want us to do? Or what can we do to, how can we support you? And so I think that when you start with them and you have honest conversations and you ask them what we can do to help them, I think that's where I 
for us, that's where it has to start as an administrator is I, I don't have all the answers and you're not, and you're going to make some mistakes, but you have to learn from those mistakes and be able to move on. And so I think it all, it centers around, I mean, we're all here because of student athletes. If there were no student athletes, Denise wouldn't have a job. And so I think we really, we really have to support them and whatever they need. Yeah. And I had to educate myself a little bit more on the, what I could learn before I even took that step with my team and um, our athletic director at St. Mary's did diversity training with all of the coaches and I was appreciative of that. Um, I address what wouldn't stand on our team immediately. Um, and for me, that was big just because I had never even been on the court with them yet. Um, so we did that and um, I had Chelsea Gray, who was also a former alum of St. Mary's come and talk with the girls. Um, and she touched on it, but also said, you know, in the future, when you're looking for colleges, look for that diversity. Make sure you're asking the right questions when you're talking to coaches or ask tough questions to the players that you could possibly be playing with on what the coaching staff is doing for diversity and social justice. Um, so for me, it was finding the right tools and educating myself on what was the appropriate way to approach it. I kind of have a two part answer to that question. Um, one, I was uh, blessed to be a part of a, a bubble season. We won't talk about the bubble necessarily. <laughs> um, but uh, within our WNBA season, um, we use our platform to talk about social injustices. And um, we partner with Say Her Name campaign. Um, it's a campaign that is highlighted um, to. Uh, to express the fact or highlight the fact that um, women of color are also experiencing um, police brutality. And so we had the name of Brianna Taylor on our jerseys. Um, we partnered with Say Her Name campaign. We had montages of these women before our games. Um, we had Black Lives Matter on our floor. Um, if you guys paid close attention, we were, um, uh, we wore Reverend Warnock t-shirts. Um, we, you know, Kelly Loeffler was uh, someone, an owner within our league who had um, different opinions about the women in our league and what we were representing. And so just being a part of that platform for me was very empowering because a, a very strong group of women got together um, and highlighted something that we felt was very important, not only in our league, but within our world. Um, and so, you know, having experienced that and then coming back to Bishop Montgomery this year, um, the administration created an office, the Office of Diversity, Equity and Justice. Um, and I'm now the coordinator of that office. And so I'm able to obviously use what I've learned um, this past year and also what I've been experiencing as a black woman in America and hopefully bring bringing light to the things that we need to um, address, whether it's on campus, in our world, um, for the students in particular. Now, when I talk about my team, um, you know, I've created something I call self-care Saturday that we meet on every Saturday through Zoom and just talk through things that are concerning for them. And so just for me, um, the experiences that are, and emotions that I've had through this year, it was great to be a part of a WNBA um, collective who understood that our voices and our platform were so important, but also going back to community at school at Bishop Montgomery, who understands the importance of diversity, equity, and justice, and, um, you know, moving the needle forward as far as, like, how we want to um, provide for our student athletes, for our families, and for our alumni in that sense. That's great. Noelle, you'll know this. I dug a quote and I want to make sure I'm saying your head coach's name right for this season. Gary, is it Kloppenberg? He, he had a quote, and I have it written on a bunch of stuff. Um, he said, represent what's right and what is just. Progress justice in the right way. The world should be going. That is the bigger picture. And I just, I thought that was a great quote and how he, what he said to that issue. So, yeah. And I would text my players. I thought what the Seattle storm did the whole entire time while you guys were in the bubble was amazing. And I texted most of them and said, you know, tune into these games and listen to the announcers, listen, listen to their post game conferences. And, um, you know, this is the platform you guys should be using as athletes as well, especially when you get to college and past college, if you're 
shooting for the WNBA or overseas. Um, so it was great for them to see role models of theirs stand for something like that. And um, it was really awesome that I could pass that message on to them. Yeah. Well, thank you all for sharing on that. Um, I think we have time. I'm going to do one last question here. And um, I guess, you know, women in sports, you know, we're just breaking barriers constantly. It just keeps changing. The bar is getting set higher and higher. And I guess I would like to know how has opportunity or acceptance or exposure changed um, since you started? It could be playing, coaching, you know, administrating, whatever it is. How, how have opportunities for women uh, progressed from when you started? Well, since I've been here a long I mean, <laughs> um, you know, I thought about this quite a bit. Um, I think the biggest thing, I, the one thing that I've noticed is just the way that, um, that women work out. And this is really simple, but you know, when I was in high school, you just, you didn't, women didn't lift, you know, they didn't, they didn't do that type of stuff. And then if they did, it was like, wow, that's pretty impressive. Where now it's just, it's, it's what you do. It's just common. I mean, I'm sure Allie and Noel, when they work with their teams, it's like, this part of getting better. But, you know, when I was in high school and Kathy, you might be able to, I mean, we didn't, we didn't have that. So you didn't, you didn't work out. You didn't, you didn't want to be that athletic body. You just were somebody that played a sport. And now I think that's, I think for me, that's where I've seen the, that's where I've seen the transformation the most. Yep. I remember that. <laughs> I know Anybody makes else like, makes you feel really old, but that's all right. <laughs> yeah, that's all right. Um, I think for me, um, it's it's great to see more women in leadership roles. Um, you know, it's not about necessarily hiring women just to hire women. You want to hire qualified, the one that's most qualified. A lot of times it is <laughs> it happens to be women. Um, but it's very cool um, to see the transition. Even, you know, we talk about Becky Hammond and a, a legend within our game coaching in the NBA and all the other women who have um, started coaching um, you know, men's sports. Um, I forget the woman who refereed um, in the Super Bowl. Um, her, her name escapes me. But it's amazing that you know it's it's a huge thing when women are 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 um, now you know taking a part of men's sports. Right? It's not that big of a deal when men coach women's sports. Um, but I love the fact that um, we are more visible because it is not only. It's empowering for me to see women in leadership roles, um, whether it's an athletic director role or um, uh, administration role, whatever it is, um, because then the youth and young, other young girls can say, hey, that's something that I never thought about being. This woman has done it. Um, and so even within coaching basketball, it's great to see a lot of women now taking that step. A lot of former players now are, are entering the coaching fields. And I think um, that's important as well. Just iron sharpens iron um, and just keep empowering each other, keep investing in one another. And um, it's cool for me to see that. Yeah, absolutely. And by the end of my career at San Jose State, we were an all female coaching staff with a female athletic director and a female president. So that's where you have a little bit of hope and, you know, it's so great to see that. I still don't think it's anywhere where it needs to be. You know, I've seen men hop over to the women's side of college sports and they either have a lateral position or maybe even a promotion. And that just wouldn't happen with women, women yet. And so we obviously still... Sorry, school bells. We still have a little bit of... <laughs> to go um but it's it's getting there and it's encouraging some of the girls on my team when I was hired said I was their first female coach they've ever had um so for them to have fem a female role model because some of them do want to be coaches is huge for them and women need to know that they can be in this role they can be whatever administrator they want there's no limitations for them so for them to have role models is huge right now Yeah, I agree. We just keep progressing. And I just thank you for uh, sharing all your insights. Um, you three are ridiculously talented. And I can't begin 
to thank you for your time and the insights that you've shared. I think near and dear to me is the, the sharing of your faith. Um, appreciate that and, and uh, you know, having people listen to that. So I think from here, we're going to show um, the drawing or Adam, are you going to jump in or if there's any questions on the chat? I haven't seen any questions as of yet. Um, Seth, is this the time that they should go, everybody that's on, go on the link and fill that out? Yeah, if you haven't already, um, real quickly, I'll, I'll give maybe three more minutes um, to get everybody's entries in. Again, that link is in the chat. Um, but while we give some folks some time to do that, Adrian Pete did have a question that maybe um, the, the panel could help answer. He asked, what advice do you have for your younger selves? Um, let's have you, Ali, why don't you start out with that one? Um, I wish I knew about my persistence at a little bit younger of an age that you know, some hardships aren't the end of the world and that they eventually are going to make you a better person. Um, athletically speaking, I wish I knew how much sleep and diet <laughs> played a role <laughs> in my life. Um, I'm trying to stress that to my high school students right now when they tell me they had a bagel for lunch and that's all they've eaten. Um, but, you know, you have the rest of your life to hang out with friends. Um, I think high school and college are such a vital part of the rest of your life. And um, you could do something so special in those four to eight years. So I wish I would have thought of that a little bit out of a younger age. Um, but that's the point of us becoming coaches and passing that down to the mm -hmm. next generation. Anybody else want to jump in on that? We I do have another me, question too. Oh, go ahead, Denise. Oh, um, I think for me, I would have gotten involved more in college. And what I mean involved more is I was a, I was an I was an athlete, but I wish I would have done. I wish I would have spread out a little more and done and done more things. Gotten a little bit of I don't know experience in other areas. Join clubs instead of just going to practice and then going to class. I wish I would have expanded that way as I did when I got, when I was older and I, and I realized how important that is. Um, I think for me, kind of both of those, you know, in college, I'm all eating in and out at 2 a.m. in the morning and <laughs> thinking I'm an athlete, I'm okay. But also, you know, you go to college and you think, you know, this is your, your job essentially. Um, and you don't really come up for air um, in that, you know, you, you, you venture into other things. So I'll agree with both. I think that's what probably I would tell my younger self is to come up for air and smell the roses sometimes, and that's okay. Um, you'll still be able to accomplish the things that you want to accomplish. Um, but yeah, just like you're saying, spread, spreading wings in other ways. I, I do wish I was involved a little bit more in college with clubs and, and meeting friends outside of sports. Good. Great. And then uh, another question was, what's been your biggest mistake you've learned from as a leader in sports? <laughs> I could take this one just because I am constantly still working on it. And I just talked to one of my good friends about it last night. You can't please everybody. Um, that's something, you know, as a new head coach and hopping into a different world than college sports, you, you're never going to please everybody. So you got to find the people that are really important to you. Um, that believe in you and, you know, stay on that same page with them. But ultimately, if you're doing the thing that you believe is correct and moral and right, um, you just have to follow your gut and people will hop on or hop off, but you will never please everybody, especially in this industry. I think for me, um, that was a great answer, Ali, first of all. <laughs> um, for me, it's just uh, making sure that my voice is heard um, when needed and not diminishing my light uh, for others and my knowledge for others and just having complete confidence in myself. Really quickly, I can just say um, with the Seattle storm, a lot of times I found 
myself the only female in the room and kind of my voice, of try, trying to find my voice amongst um, men who haven't even played a WNBA game or been in a locker room, you know what I mean? And so just uh, just, just making sure, understanding for myself, um, my superpower is my voice and my experience um, and, and not let, ever letting that light diminish or that voice diminish um, and, um, to make others comfortable or feel like, like I'm not enough in that sense. I would agree with that. I, I, I would agree with Allie is you have to, your belief system. And if you, if you're in your gut, you feel like you're doing the right thing. That's what you need. You can't please everybody, but if you feel that you've done, you stayed within your character and what you believe in your belief system, then I think that that's, that's what drives you. And I also, you have to have people to lean on. You can't, you can't do this all by yourself. And so you have to have, you have to have your crew, your people, um, your dudes, I don't know, whatever they call them now, <laughs> but you have to have your, your core people that you're comfortable with and you can lean on them when you're, when you're having a bad day. Great, another question that has come up is, who was your favorite coach and why? I can answer that. I mean, my favorite coach and I mean, the name means nothing to anybody, but um, Coach Harris was probably my favorite coach because no matter how much that, um, let's see, I would say when, how, no matter how much he got on you or he, you always knew he had your back. And so he would correct you, but then he would also follow that up with some positive. So you always knew no matter how hard he was on you that he was doing it for a reason and he was doing it to make you better. Um, I don't want to incriminate any coaches <laughs> or myself, I should say. Um, so I'll say one of my favorite coaches was actually my volleyball coach in high school, um, Kim Willeman. Um, one thing I always took from her was that, you know, this work ethic that she had, she would practice with us. I don't know, in high school, you don't know a, a age reference frame reference, age reference frame, I'm trying to say. So she could have been in her 40s. I don't know. I feel like she was in her 60s. <laughs> but she was just so intense, worked out with us, beat us in drills. But this set the tone for my high school career, I believe. Um, just the passion that she exuded every day. Um, that's um, one coach who always sticks in my mind and my heart. Mine's probably um, Coach Jamie Craighead over at San Jose State because she was my coach in college and you know I'm only five three and a half so back then that wasn't a very popular height for division one and um you know she rolled with me and I had a five two point guard too and it wasn't about that and it's about taking chances and um you know like you said it wasn't the transactional relationship it wasn't just about wins and losses and that was the first coach I had had that it it was more about empowering her young student athletes, um, caring about their days, caring about their academics. You know, it was the whole package in, in that program. So that's really why for me. I got to jump in here because I was just trying to get into the game as a coach. I was trying to decide if I wanted to coach. And I went to a final four in Tacoma, Seattle, and I saw Teresa Witherspoon play for La Tech. And I'll never forget her crossing half court and slamming the court and getting in a defensive stance. And I'm like, I want to coach someone like that. That's what I want to have a team be all about. So I'll never forget her. Uh, I'll never forget her as a player. And she's just one of the most inspiring females I've, I've ever seen. So I had to throw that in there. Any more questions, Adam? Those were uh, all the questions that I can see. And then Seth, I'll turn it back over to you um, at this point. Thanks for yeah. doing that, Adam. I appreciate it. Yep. No worries. Right. Um, guys, it's it's time to pull the winner for the stock uniform set. Um, let me just pull in the randomizer real quick. And our winner is uh, Jennifer Hansen Wofford. And I apologize if I butchered that name. Uh, from Prince of Peace Catholic School. So congratulations, Jennifer, you on? Yes, I'm on. That's incredibly exciting. Thank you so much. Yeah. 
Awesome. Congratulations. Um, I will have Adam from our East Bay Team Sales uh, Division. He'll reach out uh, shortly after the workshop and get everything set up with you. But um, I'll, I'll pass it back to Kathy just for, for ending remarks and just want to say thank you to, to all of our panelists and everybody who joined us here today. Um, surely appreciate your time and, and uh, engaging with us. Yeah, I just I want to thank Ali and Denise and Noel. You guys, I said it, ridiculously talented, but just remarkable and just keep doing great things. Keep doing the higher things. As I know, I can feel your hearts and that's what you're doing. So appreciate you doing this uh, so much. And I also want to thank the CNAA for allowing East Bay to be a part of this. Um, and just everybody that listened, thank you for your time. It is a gift. And uh, just hope that you got something out of it. So thank you.